Bye. After two years in the planning, the adventures start now. The Oosterschelder is setting sail from Plymouth today, retracing Charles Darwin's famous journey on HMS Beagle. The ship will stop in every major port where Darwin made landfall, 50 one-week stays, teaching conservation and natural history. It's the brainchild of Stuart McPherson. We've partnered with local conservation groups with amazing projects on a rainbow of subjects all around the world. They'll be studying animals from giant tortoises in the Galapagos to whale sharks in Tahiti and everything you can imagine in between. The ship will circumnavigate the globe, encountering storms and adverse weather, something that holds no fear for Captain Herbert Nab. He's been at the helm of this ship for 30 years. And then these, these beautiful moments, like sometimes you hoist these sails, you like in a gentle breeze and they start filling and then the ships start picking up speed. It's like, it's almost, almost like, you know, she's spinning like a cat and then that, that really makes it worth it. Well, this isn't just about the adventure. It's also about the learning. Whilst they're circumnavigating the globe, they're offering up the most exciting classroom in the world. Yeah, so the, the idea is, over the weeks as we're traveling around the world, we are going to broadcast live from the ship, live from different islands and ports and places we're visiting, uh, into the classroom. So we'll get to, uh, classrooms will get to see the ship, they'll get to meet scientists, explorers, conservationists from all over the world, and they'll get to spend some time with some of the ambassadors, Jane Goodall, Sylvia Earle, and uh, Sarah Darwin. Charles Darwin is credited with the single most important human thought, the theory of evolution, that challenged the very foundations of our beliefs and changed scientific thought forever. It's hoped this voyage, which is scheduled to clock up 190,000 nautical miles in two years, will inspire a new generation of explorers to follow in his footsteps. Jeff Moody, GB News. Well, Stephen and I were just discussing, neither of us have sea legs. We don't fancy that much ourselves, no. but it is quite a spectacle to see. And luckily, Jeff Moody has gone to Plymouth for us this morning. And Plymouth uh, looking splendid, I'd imagine, with a, with a tall ship there, Jeff. Absolutely. The sun's shining as well. We've got a wonderful morning for it. Um, the ship sets sail in about 20 minutes' time. Really pleased with the weather. You must be delighted, Stuart. Yep, it's been 10 years in development and four years really hard work. And yeah, as you say, in a few minutes' time, this beautiful ship will start a two-year voyage. Do we know how Charles Darwin was feeling on, on this morning, the morning when he set sail? Yeah, he recorded it pretty, pretty much in, in great detail. It was the 27th of December, 1831. He'd been here in Plymouth for months, waiting for the ship to go. It kept being delayed. It got to Christmas Day. <laughs> the sailors had got drunk, and so it couldn't leave on the 26th. And then finally, on the 27th, the weather was perfect. It actually had heart palpitations and heart, heart pains, but he hadn't told hold anyone because he was so excited and uh, didn't want anyone to say that he couldn't go. So yeah, he stepped aboard and off it went. Now we think of Charles Darwin as an old man. The pictures we see of him, he's an old, learned, wizened man, isn't he? But how old was he when he did this voyage? Well, that's a really good point. He was 22 years old. He was not that old man with a beard. He was a young, enthusiastic adventurer about to set sail. OK, well, we're about to set sail. What's the first stop? The ship goes straight to the Canary Islands, goes to Tenerife. Darwin couldn't actually step ashore at Tenerife. There was a, a quarantine in place. He, he saw the island, but this ship will. This will go to, to Tenerife and land there. Oh, quite fancy a trip to Tenerife right now. Well, we're expecting a band to be arriving on the quay any minute now. And then at 8 o'clock, we're setting sail for the open seas. Lovely Wonderful. stuff, Jeff. Thank you very much indeed.